Yesterday, Une Bilbao, a defender for the Mexican club team Necaxa, was impaled by a five centimeter long nail in his right knee during a tackle. I want to take you through this footage in more detail and discuss the injuries that I'd be worried about. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sonam and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on latest content where I review injuries as they happen. For now, let's get back to looking at the footage. When he's running to the ball and he gets pushed to his knee and he, he slides right into this advertisement banner. If we go back here, you'll see the right knee essentially slides. And I mean, you wouldn't think anything of it. He's sliding on turf and it'd be okay. And it's when you actually look at how he looks afterwards, you see this wound. So let's look a little bit forward here. And you're going to see when the goaltender removes himself, a wound quite large on the lateral aspect of the right knee. So you can see that you can actually see fat tissue here. We call that adipose tissue. All right, so this will show it to us head on. So Une is here, and this is where he's trying to protect the ball, falls to his knee. And I want to bring your attention to this advertisement banner. First off, apparently news reports state that banners should not be within two meters of the field, especially ones with nails sticking out of them. And my suspicion is the nail was actually in this corner. Because if you watch this replay footage, this is where the lateral aspect of the right knee goes straight into the banner. And I mean, thinking about this on, at the onset, I wouldn't have thought much about this injury. So when you look at the knee here, this is the right knee. I've put on some muscles, and main arteries, main veins, and main nerves. This is the outside aspect of the knee. And essentially, the way he fell, he has a gash on this area. This is your kneecap right here, and I'll remove the actual, uh, there we go. So this is the kneecap here. And he, got, he had a gash here while he bent his knee. Things I'd be worried about, I'd definitely be worried about joint uh, joint involvement. So if that nail, for example, went in this way, we could damage things like the meniscus, the ACL, PCL. I don't really think the ACL and PCL would, would have been really implicated in this case because his nail would have had to go directly into the middle to impact the ACL and PCL. And there wasn't really a twist injury. This was more of a, a an actual traumatic injury of an external object going into the knee. So I'd be worried about your cartilage and your menisci in your knee. Other things I'd be worried about, uh, damage to the patellar ligament or the quadriceps tendon. These can cause quite a lot of issues with the kneecap instability if there's a, a true rupture. Now, if we think about the, the mechanism and the fact that we saw that cut on this side, other things that I'd be worried about are chips of the bones and fractures. The risk of damage to nerves and blood vessels is actually a lot lower than say if he was impaled from the back of his knee. I'm gonna flip this knee backwards and what I want you to see is that, look at this extremely large artery, and that's your popliteal artery. That, if severed, could cause quite a lot of bleeding. We can also put on some veins as well, and as you can see, on the back end of the knee, on the posterior aspect, there's quite a lot of nerves, veins, and arteries that can be implicated. The nerve that I'd be most worried about, to be honest, especially with that type of injury, is something called the common fibular nerve. So it is a nerve that actually wraps around your fibular head. If you look at this head on, this is your main shin bone. And if you actually start feeling the leg to the outside, you'll actually feel a little head on the outside, just lower to your kneecap. That's called the fibular head. And there is a nerve that wraps right around there. And that is this nerve right here, which is your common fibular nerve. And it provides a lot of innervation to these muscles here that is implicated in kind of inverting, everting the foot. So on the field, the first thing I'm thinking about when I see an injury like this is whether or not there's damage to bones, nerve, and blood vessels. Because if they're damaged to any of those, they become more of an, it, it becomes more of a surgical or an emergent situation. When it comes to damages to soft tissue structures like tendons, ligaments, and, and things like menisci, we have a little bit more time to figure it out because it's not life or limb. So the first thing I would have done is I would have gone on the field, one, made sure that the bones were in place and there was no acute dislocation of the knee. I'm not too worried about it in this case. The second thing I do is actually look at the wound and try to see how deep it went. Do I see bone fragments? Do I see things popping out? Do I see extensive bleeding? I would do a good neurovascular exam, so checking for blood flow down below to make sure it's still intact, checking for sensation and him being able to at least wiggle his toes and move his toes to kind of give me a gross idea of whether or not 
his nerves and blood vessels still work okay. Then we get him off the field. We definitely be doing the imaging at that time, starting with x-rays to make sure there was no bony issues. And depending on if we're suspicious for soft tissue injuries later on, he would likely need an MRI to really look at his knee. He's a professional soccer player, so he's really going to need his knee. And I mean things like the menisci and ligaments. And the kneecap ligaments are super important. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have to order that if they had any other suspicion of, of any other injuries. Last thing I wanted to show you was a picture of the nail that came out of his knee. So if you look at this picture here, this is, it, it's quite, it, it, it's large. And my suspicion is it was actually this part that impaled him just by the way they would likely hammer these advertisement banners in there. But this can do quite a lot of damage, especially at the force that he slid into it. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of this and how bad his injury actually was. I don't have too much more information on it at that time, but I will definitely leave a link in the actual description. Once I do have an update, if any of you have an update, please leave it down below. We'll see with time what the reports state, and I really do wish him the best of recoveries. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos in the future where I break down injuries that professional athletes face so that an average fan can better understand them, please subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.